All right, let's turn our attention to this Saturday night's card at the Palace of Auburn Hills in suburban Detroit. The main event of UFC 123 is a battle between two former UFC light heavyweight champions in Quentin Rampage Jackson and Lyoto Machida. Now, both of them are coming off losses. Machida suffered his first loss in 17 pro bouts back in May when he was knocked out in the first round of his rematch with Mauricio Shogunua, who became the new 205-pound top dog. Jackson dropped the unanimous decision to arch nemesis and former champion Rashad Evans at UFC 114 in May. Now, Evans is, of course, next in line to challenge Hua for the title early next year. Shogun currently recovering from knee surgery following his title victory. Who do you see prevailing between Rampage and the Dragon on Saturday night, and why? I think this is Leonardo Machida's fight to lose here because of his style, the way he's so loose out there, um, his speed, his, his, uh, his quickness on his feet, also his underrated ground game. I think very much so that um, Rampage Jackson needs to turn back the clock here. Based on what we saw against Rashad Evans, and really some of the things that Rashad, uh, excuse me, that Rampage has been saying leading up to this fight, I'm not really sure what his mindset is like going into this fight. I feel like um, he's trying to find himself. You know, he didn't train at Wolf Slayer, and he's, he's stayed home with his kids, he's brought some guys over. I don't know how committed he is to training to this fight. This is a very important fight for Leonardo Machida. Um, you know, he just lost his medal. He needs to prove that he is still a contender at 205. So I think he keeps this fight standing. I think we see the old quick Machida moves in and out, out of the pocket, uh, uses effective striking to ride out a decision victory. Well, as we know, it's almost impossible to hit Machida unless you're Shogun Hua, and it's almost impossible to finish Quinton Jackson unless you're Hua or Vanderlei Silva. I think Machida's going to utilize better footwork, movement, and superior hand speed to garner the unanimous decision 29-28. Jackson has the power advantage, but I think he's going to become frustrated and start fighting with emotion, and usually that is a recipe for disaster, but we shall see. One thing is certain, the victor is right back in the hunt for the 205-pound title. All right, tell me the truth. Did you ever think we would see the rubber match between former UFC welterweight champs Matt Hughes and BJ Penn? To be honest, no more. I never thought we would actually see this, uh, this trilogy because I thought BJ Penn was looking so good at 155. I actually thought he would retire as a lightweight. But as you know, he lost his last two to Frankie Edgar. And he needs sort of a, a fresh coat of paint on his career here. So they bumped him up to 170 and they gave him a shot against his old rival Matt Hughes, which on paper... I don't know what it means for either guy. I mean, I know Matt Hughes is on a three-fight winning streak, but I don't know what it means, you know, to, to beat BJ Penn at this point in his career as a welterweight. But it's just a fun fight on paper. and very tough fight to call for me, but I think I'm going to go ahead and give the edge to BJ Penn. Uh, I think BJ's quicker than Matt Hughes right now. I think that uh, striking sort of on par, but it's very hard to take BJ down. Um, and, and Matt Hughes relies a lot on his wrestling. So I see BJ riding out a split decision victory. I wouldn't be surprised to see Matt Hughes win. But I don't know. I, I'm going to go with my heart on this one, and, and I think BJ Penn looks very good uh, at the Palace. Yeah, I gotta agree with you, Ariel. I think this fight is gonna come down to which version of BJ Penn shows up Saturday night. If we see the unmotivated, out of shape, lethargic Penn, then I think Hughes has more than enough left in his tank to take this fight to the ground and grind out a unanimous decision win. But if Penn shows up in tremendous shape and the right mindset, his crisp boxing and superlative takedown defense should be more than enough to give him the win. Well, another intriguing bout of UFC 123 is a lightweight showdown between George Sotaropoulos and Joe Lozon. I'm looking forward to what should be an entertaining fight in all facets of the sport. Both of them have tremendous BJJ skills, but i got to give the edge to striking to the Aussie. And I think a win by Sotaropoulos should give him a shot at the winner of the unified UFC lightweight championship. Who do you think wins and why? At the end of the day, if I'm going to be forced to pick a winner here, I'm going to go with Sotaropoulos. I think he's been more, um, you know, more on point in his last few fights. Lozon at times a little unpredictable. Um, sometimes you, know, you see a very good performance like we did uh, at USB 118 and then a not so very good performance. We don't know what to expect. And yes, he's been injured and he's been battling injuries. I think he's 100% now. So I think we'll see the best Joe Lozon. But uh, Sotaropoulos, due to how tough he is on his feet and on the ground, I think he wins another decision victory. All right.